Nothing greater than God's presence. You know, the song that we sing, love his presence. We should be lovers of his presence. If we're not lovers of his presence, there's definitely something wrong. Amen. Living out of the outer court is not a place where you and I want to be. We want to live in the holy place and the most holy place. Would you turn your, grab your swords and turn your Bibles to Psalm 149. Psalm 149. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Cleansing rain. Amen. Hallelujah. Walk behind the camera. Thank you. Psalm 149. Everybody there? Let's speak it because what you speak is what you eat and what you eat is what you become. Praise the Lord. Come on, speak it with me. Sing to the Lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of the saints. Are we in the assembly of the saints? When God speaks, is it a question or is it a command? Amen. Amen. So when he speaks his commands, does it become law? Yes. Amen. Anything God speaks becomes a law. And verse 2 is already there. Let's speak it. Let's let Israel, but now we're not Israel. I mean, not that we're not Israel. We are Israel in an aspect, but we're not in Israel. So we are in the house of true ministries. <laughs> so let those of the house of true ministries rejoice in their maker. Rejoice. And let the children of Zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with a what? Dance. Isn't that something? Let them praise his name with a dance. You know, a lot of people dance when they get a big chunk of money in their hand. <laughs> let them sing praises to him with a timbrel and harp. And let the Lord take pleasures in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. In other words, the word says that we are to work out our salvation with fear and trembling. That means honor and respect. Showing honor and respect in the presence of God. He is the king. He is the commander. And he is the chief. When we assemble, there should be an area of respect. If Jesus was to walk in this room right now, we'd either fall on our faces or jump for joy. Amen. Those are two places of position. <laughs> That's honor and respect. And verse 5, let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds where you're not in bed anymore so you can sing even louder. <laughs> let the high praises of God be in their what? In their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hand. In other words, what is he saying? He said, look, without praising and worshiping the Lord, without making connection to his presence, you got no power. You don't have any power. And so in this, he's talking about the two-edged sword in his hand. Well, you, your two-edged sword now is out of your mouth because it is the ministry of the spirit, no longer of the physical, but of the spiritual. He says this, now look at verse 7. To execute vengeance on the nations and punishments on the peoples. To bind their kings. In other words, that's the keys of binding and loosening. That's the keys of the kingdom. To bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. And to execute on them the written judgment. That is the law of God. This honor he of all his saints. It is an honor. Praise the Lord. It is an honor in this. This is why many people, they wonder why they're not getting breakthrough. They wonder why they're not advancing. They wonder why that the enemy's stealing everything. 
The reason is because of the lack of making connection to God's presence. The lack of sowing. The lack of singing. In other words, listen, you can sit there and sing and mumble all you want. <laughs> and your words go to the ground. The more you sing, the harder you sing, the more zealous you are for the presence of God, the more you move away your presence. The more you move away the atmosphere that has been oppressing you. And the more you press in, the more you sing, the more you sing, the more you sing, the more further and further and further you get. And you know what happens? You begin to lose you. Amen. The little woe is measy. It's amazing how people can, men and women can go out to work and become tremendous workers and work hard. But when it comes to fighting for God's presence, they become wussies. Wussies. Anybody want to be a wussy for the presence of God? No. That's dumb, right, disgusting. We're to be warriors fighting for God's presence. The word tells us he calls them cowards. And he said they will not enter his presence. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. You know what? I don't care. And let me tell you something. God can't do anything for you until you connect with that presence. Other than that, the devil will steal everything, no matter what it is. And too many people just give up. Fight! It's amazing. I remember fighting for the dope. Boy, I'd fight like crazy. I'd fight over it. I'd fight to get everything I wanted in the physical realm. And it got me nowhere. But now we need to fight into the spirit to make that connection so God can release his presence and his promises. That is a law. What you sow is what you reap. That is a law. Nobody outruns it. You can't dig under it and you can't jump over it. That is for every human being on this planet. Amen. Nobody escapes it. Nobody. And until that's a revelation and an impartation of a reality into a life, that life will never change. Amen? Amen? Amen. Turn to Galatians 6. Oh, yes. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 7. You know, the word says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. That's one of our famous scriptures here. Destroyed for lack of knowledge. What did they destroy it for? Not knowing how to access God's presence. <laughs> <laughs> that's the simplest thing. That's why that song we sing, we are lovers of his presence. Man, I'm a lover of his presence. I'm going to fight, sing, praise, worship, dance. If I have to flip, I don't care what I got to do. I've seen people do cartwheels at service. <laughs> I'm telling you, whatever it takes, get in. Because once you connect, you're different. You remember, he told the first king of Israel, Saul. You remember that? The people wanted a king. They refused Jesus. No, no, we'll take our own. We want a king that we can see physically and touch. And the prophet Samuel told him, well, you know what's going to happen, don't you? He's going to tax you. He's going to probably lie to you and cheat you. But you still want a man to trust in instead of God? Yes, we want a king. So the Lord takes this guy named Saul. And the first thing he says to him, he says, oh, I want you to hang out with the prophets. I want you to go up there and hang out with the prophets. Why do you want him to hang out with the prophets? He says, because when the spirit of the Lord comes upon you, you become a new man. 
but there was something they had to do. The prophets were praising and worshiping. They were hitting those tambourines and cymbals. Yes! And you know what they were saying? Shoo. 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 See, when you clap your hands, the demonic forces hate it. They can't stand while you praise and clap your hands. It affects them and draws them back, pushes them back. So people sit there like this. Oh, Lord, you're nice. I love you. <laughs> Demons are eating their lunch. Eating their lunch. You know, many people are half mass. I don't want to say the other word. But anyways. <laughs> Touch him. Amen. Touch him. Okay, they're half donkey. <laughs> Remember, Holy Ghost Boot Campers, Officers Training School. That's what it's about. This is not some kind of wussy Bible study. This is a training session. Why? Because we got a job to do. We've been sent into this world to fulfill a mission. Amen. And you can't let anything interfere with it. Nothing. Especially you. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 7, what does it say? Don't be stupid. Oh, don't be deceived. God is not mocked for whatever man sows, he will also what? Reap. Hello, that is a law. You can't jump over it. You can't run around it. And you can't dig under it. That's it for everyone. For he who sows to his flesh will reap what? Corruption. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. One leads to death. One leads to life. Which one do you want to sow to? And don't grow, let us, and, and let us not grow weary while we're what? Doing good. In other words, while you're doing it, don't give up until you what? Connect. For in due season, you're going to reap if you don't give up and lose heart. You remember the story about the woman with the issue of blood, right? She saw Jesus. Now, this woman had been suffering for 18 or more years. She spent all of her money on all the doctors. There was nothing left. Sometimes some people got to get to that place where there's nothing left. I've been there. Nothing was left. And when she heard about Jesus and saw, she couldn't see him yet because he was in the crowd. She got on her hands and knees in her pain, in her bleeding, in her torment. She crawled on her hands and knees, probably got kicked, stepped on, and didn't let go, didn't quit, because she knew, she said, she came out of her mouth, if I can just touch his garment, I'll be healed. She brought that own confession on herself. And when she crawled and finally touched his hem, she got healed. And you know what? Jesus said, who touched me? Everybody touched him. But there was only one that had that level of acceptance and faith that said, I know that if I can touch him, I know that I know that I know that if I can touch him, I'll be changed. And she was. See, so many people are expecting Jesus to come to them and touch him. No, you go to him. That's called sowing. The word says, you draw near to me. The Lord said, you draw near to me, then I'll draw near to you. Amen. Amen. It is one law. There's laws. There's laws that lead to death and eventually hell. And then there's laws that lead to life. These laws are guidelines and boundaries. Amen. Amen. They assist me and you. Everything God speaks is a law. Go to Romans 8. Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, the other side must become such a reality. The unseen must become a reality. 
it must be more real to you than this side. Does everybody get it? It must be a constant reality to you all the time that there's another side, that you always want to make contact with the Lord. Why? Because that's where you came from. That's where you and I came from. There should be a desire to want to go home. There should be a, want, a desire to be filled with his presence. There should be a desire to touch him. There should be a desire there. If there's not a desire there to get in his presence, we're lost. Because then there's a the desire to get in another presence. In Romans 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? To the Spirit. Those are two laws, aren't they? For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. The law of death, and there's a law of life. The law of life is known as the law of eternity. Everyone say law of eternity. This is what we're talking about today. It is the law of eternity. It is, why? Because a law is a guideline, isn't it? It's boundaries. So that as you are cooperating with this law of eternity, you access eternity. Oh, yeah. For what the law, well, he's talking about the Ten Commandments, could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh. On account of sin, he condemned sin in the flesh. That the righteous requirement, everyone say righteous requirement, that means there's an area where you and I must cooperate. If there's not a cooperation, then there's no blessing. There's no release. That the righteous requirement of the new law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the what? According to the Spirit. Again, he is not talking about, see, the Ten Commandments exposed sin, but it didn't have any power over it. Does everybody get it? The Ten Commandments exposed sin, but didn't have power over it. Now the new law of life, the law of eternity, has power over it. Why? Because these laws are in Christ that guide me and you and set boundaries so that you and I can cooperate with this law, which is everything that he speaks, and overcome the powers of darkness. But first you must make contact in his presence. Amen. Oh, yes. Are you ready? Let's go a little further. For those who live according to themselves, or the flesh, set their minds on themselves, and worldly things and fleshly things. But those who live according to the Spirit, they according they live, they set their minds according to the things of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. For to be carnal minded or fleshly minded or selfish minded is death. There it is, that's the law. But to be spiritually minded, Christ like minded is what? Life and peace. Again. These are two laws. Because the carnal mind is against God and it's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can it be. So those who live, or, or so then those who are in the flesh cannot what? Please God. Again, there's the law of death and there's a law of life. The law of life is known as the law of the spirit. It is the law of eternity. To follow the law is following the spirit of God. By his voice and by his word. Amen. Again, it's not the law of Ten Commandments. It is the law of God, the law of eternity. It is a new law that God placed in this new covenant for me and you. It is new. That's why Jesus came. Amen. Amen. Well, and, and what is it? It's, it changes us until there is no power of sin. No disease power. No addiction power. No fear power. No bondage power. No doubt. No lust. All of these things you overcome. And we are released then from a law that I want to call trying. 
I hate when people come to me and say, I'm trying. I'm going to slap the hell out of them and make room for heaven. Don't give me your trying stuff. I want to see doing. That's what it's about. God never asked me to try. You know what he said to me? Do. Do. So he moves us from the law of trying into a law of doing. Then you do it. Well, I think I'll just try this. <coughs> you know, people get at the edge of the pool and stick their foot in the, I'll just try this. That's when I come behind them and push them in. <laughs> now you're going to do it. <laughs> Again, that, in that place, we are released from the law of trying to follow into doing. It's the law of doing. That is the law of Christ. Does everybody get this? Amen. Go to Romans 7. We're going to go back one minute. Because, you know, the area of trying is always, it gives a person an opportunity for reason. It gives an, op basically, it gives an opportunity for failure. <laughs> well, I'll try it. <laughs> ah, you wuss. <laughs> Romans 7, verse 14. Let's speak it. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, fleshly, sold under sin. And what I am doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. If then I do what I will not to do, I agree with the law that is, it, it is good. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin who dwells in me. Because there is a law of sin, death, hell, and the grave. And sin is the presence of evil. But now it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, my old nature, called your flesh now, nothing good dwells. But how to perform what, I, what is good, I do not find. He does give the answer. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will not to do, I practice. In other words, is rebellion evil? Yes. yes. Is the will of man evil? Yes. yes. Is the will of God evil? No. Is submission evil? No. That's why he says submit to God and resist the devil or you're not going to. For if I do what I will not to do, it is no longer I who do it, but sin that dwells in me. Another presence, another law. For I delight in the law of God according to the inward man, but I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, my soul, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. O oh, wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death, from this law of death? Who will deliver me? How can I overcome this? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord and the anointing of the power of the Most High God. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law. But with the flesh, I serve the law of sin. Again, the law of death is not removed. Does everybody get it? The law of sin and death is not removed. It is deactivated. Everyone say deactivated. Why? Because it says that the righteous requirement to overcome it. See, so many times people activate it by going the opposite way of God. By falling under the law of death, hell, and the grave. The falling under the law of the flesh. They deactivate the law of life and the law of eternity. Again, the law of death is not removed, but deactivated through following the law of Christ. The law of Christ is deny yourself. Get ye behind you. <laughs> deny self, the old ways of the old man, and pick up the reality of exchange. How? The reality exchange of the, the death of Christ Jesus on the cross. He made an exchange for you, me and you. 
And what did he do? He released the law of Christ in the law of eternity so that you and I could fight using the word of God. Is everybody with me? Using the word of God to drive back, dismantle, and overcome all attacks of the enemy that prevents us from following the law of eternity. And where is that law of eternity? It's in Christ Jesus. Is everybody okay? Does everybody get this? In Psalm 119, You know, Paul was pretty frustrated. He said, man, you know, I realized that there was another law in me that battles in me. But when I came to Christ, I realized by, by being filled with his spirit and empowered that I was over to come. I was able to drive back and dismantle and overcome all the attacks of the enemy that prevents me from following the law of eternity in Christ Jesus. Why? Because he had made contact. Does anybody understand that? Psalm 119, verse 105. Psalm 119, verse 105. The law of eternity. You know, we know that there, there are laws. There's, you know, we've talked about the law of the spirit, the there's a the law of sin and death. But there's an area where you and I got to become, uh, get to a reality that by the spirit of the law that is in Christ Jesus, there is the law of eternity. But in only following that law, that guideline and those boundaries, do you make it home? He warns us in Romans 8 and verse 1, only those, those, even though you're in Christ, only those who live according to the spirit will access eternity. Those who live according to the flesh will not. They won't. But I've been a Christian 25 years. It don't matter. Those who are led by the Spirit of God are called sons and daughters of God. Those that are led by the flesh are sons of the serpent. Amen. What, Psalm 119, 105. Let's speak it. Your word. Your what? Word. Your word. Now wait a minute. It's pretty interesting and Jesus was the word who became what? Flesh. Flesh. And it says that in Christ Jesus is the law of eternity. So his word is associated with the law of eternity. Does everybody get it? So he said, your word is a lamp to my what? Feet and a light to my path. Is that guidance? Yeah, you shut the lights off. You usually run into stuff, trip over everything. and Become a bull in a china shop. Although they happen to see when the light's on sometimes, but praise God. Verse 106. I have sworn and confirmed that I will keep your righteous judgments. Now, I want you to understand that you're going to hear words of word, laws, judgments, statutes. It's all representation of God's law. It's all of his word. I am afflicted very much. Revive me, O Lord. Except I pray the free will offering of my mouth, O Lord, and teach me your judgments. My life is continually in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. That's his word, right? The wicked have laid a snare for me, yet I have not strayed from your precepts. That's his word. Your testimonies I have taken as a heritage forever. For they are the rejoicing of my heart. I have inclined my heart to perform your statutes. That's his word. Forever to the what? Very end. I hate double-minded. But I love your law. He realized that he can become double-minded. That's trying to serve two. And the word says you cannot serve two. You cannot serve two masters. Why? Why? you will die. In other words, by serving two masters, you would think, well, the Lord is going to take over then. No. He says, you won't serve someone else and serve me. I will let you go to the other. Oh, yes. Verse 114. 
You are, okay, verse 113. I hate double-mindedness, but I love your what? Law, because it's going to cause me to serve the master. You are my hiding place and my shield. I hope in your word. Depart from me, you evildoers, for I keep the commandments of my God. What's the commandments mean? His word. Law. That's the law of eternity. Does everybody get it? Upon me, up, oh, uphold me according to your word, that I may what? That I may live. <laughs> and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Hold me up, and I shall be safe. And I shall observe your statutes. What? Continue. That's his word and his law. You reject all those who stray from your statutes. They reject, he will reject them that refuse to follow his law or his word. For their deceit is falsehood. You put away all the wicked of the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles for fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. That's why he says we must work out salvation with fear and trembling. We must reverence the word of God and what it says is true reality. Not just some book, something written that you went to school with and threw the books out when you were done or gave them to someone else. Amen? Amen. Remember, commandments, statutes, his word, testimonies, judgments, and so forth, are all related to the law of eternity. Every one of them. It's all related. Given by his spirit, his voice, written word. You can get, get, he can speak to you through dreams and visions, revelations. All of these are an area where he speaks, it becomes law, and he guides me and you. Amen? Amen. We need to stop having an attitude of trying and enter the doing realm. <laughs> it's a doing realm of victory. Look at To step into the law of eternity, which leads to eternal life, now and in the future, you must step out of the law of death. Does everybody get it? We must step out of it. You cannot step into one unless you step out of the other first. The law of death. Oh, yes. <laughs> what does it do? It, it, it's, it's, it, it's controlled. It's ruled by darkness. It's over the complete earth and its atmosphere. It affects me and you all the time. We are hard-pressed all the time. We are enticed all the time. That's why it's called sin. It's the presence of evil. Who rules this earth? Satan's kingdom. Jesus is always trying to make a way of escape for me and you. So many people refuse it. I refuse it many times. I, I can do it on my own. I'm not an addict. Hurry up and leave so I can go out and use. No, I can do it on my own. Yeah, right. I did it on my own so many times, I ended up in jail, in prison. I put it myself in there myself. You know what I mean, I did it on my own. See, doing it on your own says you can't deny yourself. Hello? Doing it on your own says you can't deny yourself. Well, you, must, you and I must come into a place where we are totally dependent on his presence, his power, and his truth, and his guidance. Other than that, we're still trying to do it in our own strength. And you know what? We fail every time. We fail every time. It may seem to be going good for a while. But then all of a sudden, boom! The door opens up, and we fall through and hang ourselves. The law of eternity is a law of Christ and it is the law of spirit of life that is the escape from deception and death. Now, grace, we know, is the plan of God, right? Grace, people always talk about grace. Well, I'm saved by grace. They think they can go out and sin. That's not what grace means. And it's not God's wife. Hello? He's married to us. <laughs> Grace is the plan of God to escape 
It is carried, that it was carried into this realm by Christ's spirit. It was put in the body of his word. Hmm. The law that overcomes death, hell, and the grave. And he hung on the cross and put it all together in a package so that it would be opened up and exchanged when he rose from the grave and released it to me and you, each and every one of us, so that we could overcome in every area and live in the law of eternity, being connected to home. In 1 Peter chapter 1, you know, we were in an event yesterday, and I want to thank everyone for going yesterday and serving. It was tough because the music was so darn disgusting. And I hope everybody shook the dust off and your love killed every corruptible seed. But you know, it, it really brought a tremendous reality to me, reality to me, because I've been out of the world for 25 years now or whatever it is. And it's so different. I mean, that is really the world big time. Thank God we only do it once a year for two days. Well, the first day is not bad because we were setting up everything. The second day is where all the heathens come from. You know, I mean, people dancing with poles and like, what? Hallelujah. I mean, it's just, it's just total secular. I mean, that's what you see. These are people without God. I, you know, they let me pray anyways, you know. This one girl came up to me and said, thank you, I love that prayer so much. And then she started dancing. <laughs> dancing to the secular music and picking up a beer. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Hopefully she can hold on to that. Yeah, we're renegotiating for next year, let me tell you. <laughs> First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. But it's definitely an experience. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 3, let's speak it. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. To what? An inheritance that's what? Incorruptible and undefiled that does not what? Fade away. Reserved where? In heaven for you. Who are kept by the what? Power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. Hmm. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. That the what? Genuineness of your faith. I'm going to repeat this because he's, genuineness of your faith is the area where the genuineness of your character. Amen? Your character, which is connected to the presence of God. So the genuineness of your faith is possessing the character of Christ by your connection to his presence following the law of eternity. Amen? And in other words, it means that you are without counterfeit. You are not a pretender. You're not faking it. But you are authentic and you are real. Does everybody get it? You're authentic and you are real. That means genuine. You are living the life of Christ as a new creation. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 6 again. In this that you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials, that the genuineness of your faith, being much more precious than gold, that perishes. Though it is tested by fire, 
may be found to the praise and honor and the glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen you love, though now you do not see him yet believe in you rejoice with inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. 2 Corinthians 5. Living the life of Christ as a new creation by following the law of eternity. And the law is an area of guideline and boundaries. It's a pathway. Now some people don't believe that we're under law. We are not under the law of death, hell, and sin if we are following the law of Christ Jesus. But if we refuse to follow that law, then we are back under that law again. Oh, glory. 2 Corinthians 5, verse 16. Let's speak it. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh. That's very simple to understand. Those that are, being, uh, that are living according to the flesh are living according to the law of death. They have set, they've, been, they've deactivated the law of life. They've deactivated, does everybody get it? That law of eternity and reactivated the law of death. That's a whole teaching on its own. Therefore, from now on, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we have known Christ according to the physical realm. Yet now we thus know him no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Why? Because you are following the law of eternity. You are fulfilling the requirements. And you're constantly stepping out of the old into the new. And behold, all things have become new. Because old things are passing away. Because you are cooperating with the law of eternity. Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ and given us the ministry of reconciliation. That is that God was in Christ reconciling the world himself, not imputing their trespasses to them, and has committed to us the word of reconciliation. Now then we are ambassadors of Christ as though we are pleading with, he is pleading through us. We employ you as Christ, on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. For he has made him who knew no sin to become sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God. In other words, we are living in the law of eternity in Christ Jesus by denying ourselves through prayer, through praise, through worship, to get connected to his presence of faith, to fight, to follow. The word of reconciliation is to connect others to his presence in power and truth. Amen? But you can't give what you don't have. Again, the word of reconciliation is to connect others to his presence, power, and truth in the law of eternity in Christ to break free from deception, to break free from bondages, to break free from death, hell, and the grave. Is everybody Okay. Hebrews 10. Hebrews 10. The law of eternity. Verse 35. 10.35 Hebrews 10.35 Everybody got it? Amen. Let's speak it together. Therefore what? Do not cast away your confidence. Don't grow weary. Don't give up. Which has great what? Reward. Become a fighter. For you in need of in what? Endurance. Is endurance a fighter? So that after, now this is very powerful. 
For you have need of endurance so that after you have done the will of God or the law or you fulfill what God has asked you to do. Amen. Amen. Then you may receive the promise. Look at there is a there's a in our life as we are stepping out of the old, stepping into the new. There are certain things God's going to ask you to do. Because we're in a process of training for reigning. So he's going to ask you to do certain things. When you do it and complete it, he releases a promise. And it's not until you complete it. Does everybody get it? But people are trying to receive the promise without completing what God asked them to do. And it's not going to happen. Look, at he came to bring his life and life abundantly. The devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. So the enemy is always trying to bring limitations or distractions or whatever it is so that he can prevent you from going forward and stepping out of the old into the new and fulfilling and following the law of eternity. Amen? He wants to bless us. He wants the praises to be released to us. Amen? All right, good. For you have need of endurance, so that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise for yet a little while, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by what? Faith. That's your connection. That is your connection. You know, I, the word says faith comes by hearing and the hearing of the word of God. But how many people do you know that will read the word of God and still do the stupid things? And that ain't faith. The, pro the lack of it is the connection to the presence of God. Because what we want is the living word, not the seed. The living word is released by the presence of God. Now the just shall live by faith, but if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. For we are not those who draw back to perdition, but those who believe in the saving of the so, in other words, don't stop doing. Don't fall into trying again. Keep stepping out of trying. Amen. We live by faith, which is our connection to God's presence, power, and truth. By the law of eternity is to deny yourself and fight and follow. We are to be living above the world. Above the world standards. With its thoughts and its cares and its, you know, <coughs> lusts. We're to be living in a new world of our own in Christ Jesus. Each one of us. In 2 Corinthians 4, a couple more scriptures. I think it's important we get this in. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Is everybody there? Therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced the hidden things of shame, not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. For if our gospel, which is the message of truth, the word, amen, which relates to eternal the law of eternity, is veiled. So if the law of eternity is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. Because they can't walk in the law of eternity. Or if they've chosen to walk away from the law of eternity. Whose minds the God of this age has blinded, who have not believed, the, 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 uh, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is in the image of God should shine on them. For we do not preach ourselves with Christ Jesus, the Lord, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Christ Jesus' sake. For it is, the God, it is God who commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power may be of God and not us. And that can only be established by being connected to the presence of God, being filled with the Spirit, and submitting to the law of eternity. We are hard-pressed on every side, yet not crushed. We are perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, 
always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal bodies. So then death is working in us, but life in you. And since we have the same spirit of faith according to what was written, I believed and therefore I spoke. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will also raise us up with Jesus and will present us with you. For all things are for your sakes, that grace, having spread through the many, may cause thanksgiving to abound to the glory of God. In other words, don't lose heart. Don't stop doing. Amen? Amen. Keep trying. Why? I mean, don't, don't fall into the trap of trying because it, nothing, it leads to nothing but reasoning. Trying is actually not believing. Amen. Amen? It's false hope. But you and I have this treasure of earthen vessels that those who are in Christ are living out the law of eternity in power and truth and in character and in fruits. James chapter 1. Everyone say, I'm more than a conqueror. You know, many people don't believe it. And you won't believe it if you're not living according to the law of eternity. It's impossible. They can speak all these words, but really not believe it. You know why? Because they don't believe it, they don't receive it, and they can't execute it. Because execution is a part of the plan of living according to the law of eternity. We execute. We execute our enemy. Oh, hallelujah. James chapter 1 and verse 21. Therefore lay aside all what? Filthiness. Let's speak it. An overflow of wickedness. And receive with meekness the implanted word which is able to save your souls. Why? The word is a part of the law of eternity. But be doers of that law or that word, and not hearers only, deceiving yourself. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he's an idiot. Or he's like a man observing his natural face in the mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty, which is the law of the what? Eternity or the law of the spirit, and continues in it, because the, the law of liberty is called the law of freedom, where the spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. And continues in this law, because it is his guidelines and boundaries. He, and a, he's not a forgetful hero, but a doer of this work. This one will be blessed in whatever he does. He will prosper. The enemy can't steal it because it's protected. But if anyone who thinks he's religious and can't even bridle his tongue but deceives his own heart, this one's religious, is useless. Pure and undefiled religion for God is, and the Father is this, to visit orphans, widows, and their trouble and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Hello. Why? Because if you're going to spot yourself with the world, you're going to fall under the law of death, hell, and the grave, which is sin. And I'm going to close it. Um, 2 Corinthians 6. 2 Corinthians 6. Praise God. In verse 14. So here's another guideline according to, because this is his word, right? The Bible's his word. It's been written. So he's given us a guideline here. He's given us an area of boundaries. Amen. Amen. This is a part of his law of eternity. In other words, by following this law, these guidelines, you will have access to eternity. And in 2 Corinthians 6 and verse 14, it says what? Do not be unevenly yoked together with unbelievers. 
For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? In other words, what's the presence of God to do with the presence of evil? Or what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with what? Idols. For you are the what? Temple of the living God, as God has said, I will dwell in them, I will walk among them, I'll be their God, and they'll be my people if they do something. If they do, if they cooperate. Amen. What did he say? Don't be unevenly yoked. With what? Worldly sin. Evil pleasures. How about worldly music? How about worldly people? People, places, and things. He's saying step out, step away from the law of sin and death and grave and the hell. Why? You're constantly stepping away from it. That's why you're unevenly, you got to get that place where you're no longer yoked with these things. But you're constantly stepping away. And he says, now look at this. If you do this, if you'll come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord, and don't touch what's unclean. Why? He looks at all of these things as unclean. It is a law that leads to death. It's unclean. Drugs, alcohol, it's unclean. There are things that are unclean that lead to death. And if we can't discern that, we're in trouble. Amen? It's unclean. He says, look it, don't touch what's unclean and then I will what? Receive you. And I'll be a father to you and you'll be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. Therefore, having these promises... Beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit and perfecting holiness in the fear of God. Living according to the law of eternity. Amen? Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Let this seed that's been imparted in us not only be received and believed, but be executed in our everyday life for your glory in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Hallelujah. Prepare your hearts for communion. If you have any tithes or offerings, you may bring them up.